Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to talk about automated process characterization for low pH virus inactivation using the EasyMax system. The goal for our team was to totally eliminate the manual manipulations and data collection involved in low pH virus inactivation step. We used the EasyMax system that is extensively used in the small molecule realm for reaction chemistry and various other um, data recording. We started with protocol design to identify all the factors that would affect pH, me pH measurements and we considered them to design the protocol which can be used for our small scale model qualification. We compared the results from the small scale Easy, Easy Max system with our large scale 2000 liter batches to qualify the small scale model. And then we used the Easy Max system for process characterization studies that were used to support, support our stage one validation. Here's a brief outline of my talk. I'm going to spend the significant amount of time in discussing the protocol design because this is where we identified the various parameters that were important for implementing a successful protocol on the EasyMax system. Then I'll briefly touch on to the small scale model qualification and process characterization. Finally, I'll go into conclusions and acknowledgement. In protocol design, we had to consider every factors that affect pH measurement. The most important one of them is the pH calibration. Usually you have to make sure that you are bracketing the pH range that is going to be seen during the virus inactivation step. We were dealing with a pH range of 3.5 to 6.5 and hence we chose a two point calibration using buffer standard at 2.0 and 7.0. We also had to understand the measurement uh, variability which was about 0.1 unit for the system. Any drift above a 0.1 unit we would go into recalibration. We also understood some things about the ways of working and using the electrodes on the EasyMax system. We had to make sure that the fill cap is loosened or removed so the air could enter into the reference cell and provide a stable reading. If this is not done, you would usually see a very choppy uh, pH reading on, on the monitor. The pH probe used for our studies was calibrated before and after every run. Then we had to consider the thermodynamic changes that lead to the ion changes in the ion distribution on the electrode surface, essentially the effect of temperature. If the sample temperature is different from the calibration temperature by more than 10 degrees C, we will see a pH drift of about 0.15 unit which was not acceptable for this experiments. Hence, we decided to fix the reaction temperature for all the experiment at 20 degrees C. Next, we looked at the impact of stirring on the pH measurement, impeller size, shape, agitation, and vortex formation has significant impact on the pH measurement. Usually when you are measuring pH under stirring condition, the pH will keep drifting once the stirring has stopped. For small scale model qualification and process characterization in this study, we used a four blade downward facing impeller and we were able to control the pH drift within 0.05 to 0.1 unit of the target pH. In this study, the low pH set point is the pH measured after the stirring has stopped. Then moving on further into protocol design, the next step for us was to do a test run using the affinity elution buffer. You can see on the left hand side, the base titrant addition rate and the pH response is really choppy. This is not acceptable for the study that we were planning. Hence, we went into some problem solving and found that the dosing units used 
on the easy max system uses a syringe pump and those syringes have to be filled to the maximum level in order to achieve a smooth dosing rate in the experiment on the left hand side we had some liquid air liquid interface and air bubbles in the syringe which resulted in the choppy response once we corrected for those issues we were able to achieve the smooth response that you see on the right hand side moving on to protocol design further we had to account for the different limitations of the easy max system we were delivering fixed amount of acid or base over varying amount of time so the titrant addition rate which is just described here as volume of titrant added per unit time is different when you're adding the entire acid titrant within five minutes you have to have a very high dosing rate and when you're trying to do the same thing over a span of 30 minutes the dosing rate is really low we wanted to test the end ranges of this dosing rate to make sure that we were able to achieve the target pH range at the steering condition. And you can see in the table here, we were able to achieve the target pH within 0.1 unit after the dosing had stopped. And this was important because a lot of trial and error was required to figure out the dosing rate to get to the set pH point. Using all this data, we were able to devise a protocol that's listed out here. Anybody who's worked with any automated systems like TCAN or other programming robots, you might be able to find this really simple. Um, the protocol is essentially divided into four phases. In the first phase, you are just getting the sample into the system. Here we were dealing with 50 ml of the elution pool. Then the elution pool is heated or brought to the 20 degree C temperature and the stirrer is ramped up. Once you have reached the 20 degree C and the stirrer speed, you go into the phase two of low pH addition where citric acid is added to reach the low pH endpoint. At the low, once the low, end, low pH endpoint is confirmed, you go into the pH hole, which is dialed in as 50 minute in this case. And at the end of that low pH hole, you move into stage four of the neutralization, where base is added to raise the pH to 6.5. All of the steps are automated. So you program this in at the start of the experiment and you can literally walk away and let the system do its thing. Uh, using this setup, we were able to complete the entire DOE within a set of two days. So what were the parameters that we were looking at? Uh, the parameters that we wanted to look at as the low pH endpoint, which we were able to achieve within plus or plus or minus 0.05 units. The low pH hold time is essentially dialed in by a timer, so there's no variability there. Acid titration and base titration duration were the most tricky one because you were playing with the dose, dosing rate of acid and base to achieve those durations. And it was really important to see that we were able to get those targets within plus minus 10% of the range. So then we went into small scale model qualification. Here we were comparing the results from three of our large scale batches to the results that we achieved from the EasyMax system. To compare, we were using four quality attributes, the capillary gel electrophoresis measuring the reduced and non-reduced purity. We were using charge variant using CIEF and then bioassay to confirm the identity of the molecule and aggregate to understand, oh sorry, SSC to understand aggregate. The small scale model qualification, you can see here, the small scale model had some variabilities compared to the large scale, but this was within the acceptable variability and standard two standard deviation of the large scale.
Uh, you can also see that the 90% confidence interval contains a zero, and hence the difference between the small, small and large scale is small enough to conclude a scale equivalency. The 90% confidence interval for non-reduced purity did not contain zero and is an order of magnitude larger than the standard deviation of the large scale measurement, which indicates statistically significant difference between the two scale. However, when we discussed this with our analytical colleagues, they mentioned that the non-reduced purity assay has a variability of about 3% which is way greater than the variability observed in the small scale and large scale runs. Hence, we were able to conclude scale equivalence using the variability of the assay. Then we started to go into the process characterization. As I mentioned, the four parameters that we wanted to look for process characterization were established based on a risk analysis framework that is used by most companies nowadays. This resulted in about a DOE with about 19 experiments, including the three center points. The quality attributes that we measured for process characterization were the same that were used for the small scale model qualification in the previous slides. So finally, here are the results for the process characterization DOE. There were two important factors that were identified by the DOE, low pH endpoint and the low pH hold time. These two factors had significant impact on percent monomer, percent aggregate, and CIEF percent basic peak. However, the model fit confirmed that percent aggregate was the only parameter that had a significant power to be able to predict the relationship between low pH endpoint and low pH hold time. You can see the relationship between the low pH endpoint and the low pH hold time. The low pH endpoint of 3.35 has more impact on aggregation and the impact of hold time is dependent on what is the endpoint of the low pH titration. The impact of hold time increases with the decreases in the low pH endpoint. So to conclude, we were able to design a protocol using the EasyMax system from Metal Toledo to achieve to automate the low pH treatment for virus and inactivation. This enabled us to have automated data collection and access to the titration curves that could be used for future data analysis. We were able to show that the small scale model used on the EasyMax system is comparable to the commercial large scale manufacturing at GSK. And the process characterization study showed that the low pH endpoint and low pH hold time had significant impact for this particular map. With that, I would like to conclude by acknowledging my colleagues, Amelia Burke and Jennifer Fetter for helping out with the experimentation and procuring all the samples. I would like to also acknowledge my stats colleagues, Felix McGough and Amy Zhang for helping out with the DOE design and analysis. And finally, my analytical colleague, Anne Betsy for testing all the samples for us. Thank you very much for listening and I'll be happy to take any questions.